Hi there, today I am very excited indeed to be introducing my new Iris Pro DCTL bundle, which is a gamut shaping DCTL bundle very much designed with the advanced requirements of look development in mind. And as such, these 10 DCTLs are built with a lot of guardrails in place that are really supposed to guide you towards making conservative and clean adjustments that travel from shot to shot without causing any breakage. This bundle consists of three modules, Iris Hue Pro, Iris Density Pro, and Iris Saturation Pro, each of which comes in three different variations that serve different workflow preferences. So here I've already got some other look components in place, but I really want to focus on the Hue module right now, and this is the standard versions, and the layout for all of these tools is gonna to be very similar. So as you can see, we've got six fixed vectors, but we've also got one seventh custom Hue center, and you can see if I use this, if I use the curves here, this is completely free and you can adjust any vector that you would like. By default, this is set to a skin tone-ish sort of vector. We've also got a global control, a focus control. This one just narrows each band and this hue tilt feature that I will show you in a second. So as you can see, this is not designed to make radical 180 degree hue rotations, but really about subtlety and about really nuanced changes that you can make with the confidence that you won't get any sort of folds and tearing in your image. And my favorite trick at the moment is to do this and actually just do a minor 0 0.5 global hue rotation and then just compensate for that with like a 0 0.6 or so red rotation. And that already gives you a really preferential rendering of your image with a slight compression of the skin tones and very amber, warm yellows and slightly more cyan blues. And from there on, I like to tweak it a little bit more. Maybe I want my greens to be a little bit more cyan to be a little bit richer in the foliage. Maybe I want my blues to be even more cyan. And you can see this is really about very nuanced, small adjustments. And the response of these curves is very gentle. And very quickly, we get a much more preferential rendering of our image. This is where we started. This is where we are now. Uh, what I find really exciting is this hue tilt feature. And this is essentially a very sneaky way to introduce a little bit of color separation in your image without maybe going for a full split tone. Um, so if you move this to the right, you can see that we're just introducing a tilt of the hue around our middle exposure. In this case, we can adjust this with the pivot as well. Um, and so our highlights and our shadows just receive an opposite hue rotation. And all the way to the right, we just get a little bit more yellowish highlights and a little bit more magenta shadows in skin, for example. If we do it the other way around and we go very far, it almost has a cross-processing sort of look. In this case, I want to keep it subtle and just go ever so slightly to the right. And as you can see very quickly, you can achieve a beautiful preferential rendering of your hues in your image. And it's very, very hard to break the image with these tools. Let's move on to saturation. And in this case, I want to use the surgical version. The surgical version comes with an additional focus control for each individual hue vector. And in turn, it does not have a custom hue vector. So in this case, if I want to really have very rich saturated reds in this piece of clothing, for example, I can use the subtractive saturation slider to get very subtractive filmic style of saturation. But inevitably, if we turn it up this much, we're going to run into problems. Like we're going to lose detail for one. And we're obviously also going to introduce really zany colors in the skin. For example, this person now looks like she's got that traditional British spray tan look. And we don't really want that. So one thing we can do is to use the focus slider to narrow the hue width of this band. And that's the thing that you can do. However, you need to be careful with this because the further right you go, the narrower your selection becomes and the more likely you are to introduce artifacts. 
So another thing that we can do is use this preserve neutral slider and this will just mask off this adjustment from the neutrals and the very low saturations the further up you go with the slider. And if we just turn this up quite a bit to around here, you can see that we're really cleaning up the skin tones but we're not really affecting uh, the clothing here at all. We still get a little bit of saturation here in the skin and we can try to combine the focus slider with the preserved neutral slider. But as you can see, we can make very, very clean adjustments here. And another thing that we can do, and I want to turn on the sat versus sat curve for now. Here you can see what we're doing to our red vector right now. So there is one curve for each individual of our color vectors. And now I want to bring the sat limit down. And when I bring the sat limit down, we're starting to compress down our saturations in this really soft curve. And around here, we're starting to really recover a lot of details while we're still boosting the meat of the image quite a bit. And this is a super clean adjustment that allows us to go really, really far. And if I undo this for a second, as you can see, even with the sat limit all the way up, we're never really crashing through the ceiling. We always have this soft roll off of saturation. So let's have a look at these dynamic versions. And these are a little bit more like the color slice tool in Resolve 19, in that you can adjust the center for each individual hue angle. And that can be really helpful if we, for example, want to get some nice subtractive saturation here in the sky. But the sky is kind of living halfway between blue and cyan. So we can use the cyan saturation slider to get some saturation in there and see if we want it to be more subtractive, maybe. And in this case, I think that's what I want. And then I can use the cyan. Again, we can use the overlay center to move it a little bit further towards blue. And you can really see how we're getting, as we move this further towards blue, we get hold of the sky a lot better. And as you can see, all of these bands are kind of influenced by the neighboring bands as well. So my cyan here can never go past where the red, the blue center is. But if I just relax that blue center a little bit, move it a little bit further to the right, then we also sort of widen the shape of this curve. Again, we can use the center to move the magenta saturation a little bit further around red as well. And so we can very minutely control how we shape the saturation in our, in our image. And these dynamic versions obviously exist for each of the modules. One thing I want to point out about all of these tools, in this case, let's use the density to demonstrate that, is you have a contingent of density or saturation or hue rotation that you can spend. And once this is spent, you can't go past it. In this case, there's a maximum of one red density. And now if you use the global density, you can't go past that. You will see if you increase the global density now, the red density won't increase even more. The other hue angles are just going to catch up with the red more and more so that you can never go past this. This is also true for the custom hue center. So if you increase the density in the greens, for example, then you can't go ahead and sort of double that up with the custom hue. And this is true for the opposite as well. This density also features my signature negative density. So if I'm maxing out my negative density in the reds and I get this pastel look, I cannot go further down. So if I reduce the global density, all the other colors are getting reduced, but the red just stays pinned down there. And these are just the sorts of guardrails that I've built into these tools to make sure that you keep your adjustments gentle and you're not getting any breakage in any too um, extreme adjustments. What's exciting about this Density Pro is that you can actually morph between different styles of density. So I can completely smoothly morph between spherical density on the left and tetrahedral density on the right of this method slider. And now, even in tetrahedral, you can choose a custom hue center any way you want. You can totally have a smooth curve around any hue center that you want and still introduce this tetrahedral style density.
And here as well, you've got that preserve neutrals function that can be really helpful if you're introducing a lot of rare density and you want to make sure that your skin tones don't get affected. Of course, you can use the focus slider to narrow the hue selection, but most of the time, you don't actually need to do that much of that if you just use this preserve neutral slider to make sure that your lower saturations are not affected that much. And that gives you a much more smooth and natural looking results while leaving the skin tones relatively unaffected. So let's just quickly recap to see what, we're, what we've been able to achieve with these tools. So this is the image as it comes in. I've added a little bit of split tone with my yet to be released split tone pro. Um, I've introduced a soft tone curve with my Filmic Tone Curve version 2. And then I've introduced a hue shift here, a little bit of density, and a little bit of saturation. And if we turn these off and on, you can really see how we've been able to reshape a gamut. This is our image before, this is our image after, you can see you can really shape your gamut in beautiful ways with these tools. The same here. And this is the amount of nuance control that you can get with these tools. Now in the development of these tools, I've been in contact with pro colorists who've given me really useful feedback to make sure that I provide the best quality for you. And because these tools are a little bit more high end and a lot of work and research went into them. They are slightly pricier than my other tools. And this is why I've made sure that there are demo versions available on Kofi so that you can really try out these tools to evaluate if they are the right purchase for you or if you'd rather sit them out. Um, I hope this was a useful video. If you have any more questions, let me know. If you would like me to make more in-depth videos about each individual module, I'm happy to do that in due course as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you again very soon.